Take two. Hello, I'm McAdams. I am a So Study and Westerly Design accredited teacher, and we're here today to share the Quilt As You Go Christmas. The information is there. I've got two other pages that we're going to be referencing. So I have on the front page here the items that we're going to be using from So Study and Westerly. I have the other items that many of you have by now, and I also have down here the additions that I have that the pattern doesn't show. So this is your pattern. This is what it looks like, and this is the June Taylor stocking. And so what I have done is anything that I changed, I put down here. So what we're going to be using is the pattern. We're going to be using a third yard of Pella 987 fusible or similar to that. And then we're also going to be using a third of a yard of fabric for the backings and linings. And of course your threads for your quilting, which I mentioned over here. I use 40 and 50 weight for quilting and construction. And then I use the 60 weight for piecing. And remember the reason for that is we want a nice flat seam here as we go over it. So that 60 weight makes it so that's possible. Now I put something down here that we don't always have on there. And if you were looking at this on your computer screen, you will notice this says link. So if there's any of these things from So Steady that you want, if you will just click on this while you're on the computer screen, it'll take you right to So Steady and you can purchase those So Steady and Westerly Design items. So that will click you into that link. So I'm going to go ahead and set this paper aside. I've already shown you what the pattern looks like, but when you get it, you're going to get two pieces that will be printed like this. So this is what it will look like. It's got the lines on it, but when you get that, they will be printed so that the, the toes fit together. In other words, they would come like this. So if you just made the front of the stocking exactly like this one and the other one, they would be mirror images of each other. Now the reason for that is their intentions is these two will make one stocking. So when I did this one as my front, I used a different backing so that I could then make this just one stocking and then my other one could be another stocking. So you can see down here that these toes would actually come together. So if you want them to hang the same way so that both of them hang in the same direction, you're just going to turn this over and mark the lines on the other side. Now let me show you how easy that is. And that way you can understand why I love my nice big so steady table. So I have the wish table here. I've already pulled the drawer out, but I'll push it back in so you can see it. And I'm going to pull it back out again because what I'm going to do is underneath here I have my light stick. And when I turn that light stick on, I can now see through my batting. So what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of paper here that I can then lay on top of this and I can draw right through there. Now I've already done that, but I'm not sure where I have that piece because I was wanting to save time. Oh, I know, it's right there, Megan, in that plastic bag. So I already did that. So here it is. I already folded it up. It's the same piece. And so I just drew through there and you, you can see these lines right through how I did that. So I just saved time by going ahead and drawing that. And you'll probably notice that I can see those lines through to the other side, so it really wouldn't matter which way I chose to do this design. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to show you up close my stocking so you can see why this is going to be so much fun. I have used the straight edge template. I've used the scallop. I've used the between the lines half inch circle. Down here, I used a mini spin effects. I don't know, am I close enough that they can see that star? Go up higher. Okay. There you go. All right, there we go. So we've got the star, and that is this mini spin effects eight. You've seen me do that before. I did three of them on here. And then I also used the scallop to kind of make it look like a gingerbread right there on that one. 
And then in the bottom of the heel right here, all I did was just some echo quilting. Now on the back, we're gonna be showing you how to do um, cross hatching in two different ways. This one is what I call the 45 degree diamond. And so that's why you have those other pages and handouts there. So I'm gonna lay this aside right now. We have a question. Sure. Um, Linda wants to know what you were saying about the one third yard of Peloton, because that was when we were having the technical issues. The Peloton, the one third yard, is because when we do the back, this is the front right here. And the other one that I have already stitched up had this same thing. And so that was intentions that you would put those together. This would have been the back, the other one was the front. But I don't see any real sense in making this and the back the same. You can extend your kit here and get two stockings from it just by buying that one third yard of Pellon. So what I did was I have this one ready to go for our demo here. This is my Pellon. You can see I have fused this down to it because this is a fusible so I'm ready to quilt on that and when we're finished then I'll take and cut around it but that's just so that you can do this so that you can have more from the one kit now if I really wanted these stockings to be the same I would flip this over now and you can see through that and I would just take one of my markers and I would just make the marks right on there so that I could work from this side, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and work from the other side. I will tell you that it's a good idea to mark the outside of this quilt, right, or of this uh, fabric, the interfacing. Well, I'm really messing up, the batting. So I'm just gonna quickly go on this, and this is why I like to be able to see right through my table there with that light which is a question where do we get the light stick the light stick is available from so study it's uh i think it's like 30 dollars. it has a usb port and there's really no reason for having light underneath your table for sewing but it sure is great for something like this otherwise i've got to go to the window and stand and i can't see through you know, if it's night or whatever. And so this just makes it so much easier to be able to see through for any type of your um, applique or anything that you're doing just like this. And I just keep moving this around so it's right over that light. You can probably see it there. And I'm just coming right down and around. And my only reason for this now I'm not, this, this marker that I'm using here is my Frixon, so it's not gonna be one that damages if, so, you know, the other one was a Sharpie. That big one I had at first is a Sharpie. So, and so are you saying you don't wanna use a Sharpie on your light table? You don't wanna use a Sharpie on your project because when you launder it, I'm not always sure that Sharpie stays where it is. It might just come out and, and you know, stain your fabric or whatever. Which while I'm talking about that, let me give you another hint because I love to share all the hints that are out there. Gosh, I've got this all marked. I might just go ahead and use it now. Um, if you're not familiar with the color catchers, Shout makes what's called a color catcher. And like last week I was work or two weeks ago, I was working on a red and white fabric. I was doing a patriotic project and I was working on this red and white and I was a little worried about the red fabric. So I laundered the red fabric first and when I did, I put in two of these color catchers and I actually washed the fabric on warm so I knew I wouldn't probably do my quilt that way, but I washed it on warm. And I think we've already pitched them, but I saved them for a while because the color catchers came out a dark pink, but nothing on my fabric that was white was pink at all. So if you're not familiar with color catchers, these are a quilter's best friend. So when we actually sell a quilt or make a quilt, 
we give the person a box of color catchers with it and tell them to use them because color catches are something that will save your life and if you're one that's selling quilts and you've given them that and they didn't use them and they have an issue you have a way to go back on that so that's just an aside but i will tell you i love color catchers because they, i don't have any issues with that because it just it you know it just takes and, and catches all that color i don't know how they work i just know that they do work uh, megan if you can reach around there and get me a piece of that red and white fabric i want to show you why i was so concerned about it is because when you see it it's really red and you can see it was the red with the stars and so um, it's really going to be something and this has already been laundered and it you know no no pink or anything so great question as far as why i was doing the palon which obviously led me to two other things but the light stick is going to be invaluable now we are going to be using two and a half inch strips and the reason that's not listed is that's actually listed on the kit i cut for two stockings i cut two sets of strips so i have two of each of my four colors now they say eight colors i just went with four colors so the four colors that i'm using is this red print another or a, with metallic and then a, just the red print that's going to be my background also a pretty gold and then this is this is a fun fabric because although it's not christmas it surely is a very pretty with a little bit of metallic in it and so these are two and a half inch strips. Now, if you have never done strip piecing before, what we're gonna be doing is, you will notice when you look at this, you can probably tell the difference. This is narrower, this is the same as this, this one is coming off the heel, so it doesn't really matter. But this one is wider, and this is because this is the one we're going to start with. Now, I'm going to look at my other stocking because I want to start with the same fabric. So what I'm going to do is I am going to be using the print that had the poinsettias in it. So when I lay this on here, you can see I've already used it on my other stocking. It's not going to fit. It's not going to work down there. So that's why I said I cut two strips of each. So I'm going to get into my other pile and I'm going to find a long strip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn that light off underneath there since we don't need it. And I'm going to take this strip and the way that this strip is used is exactly the way it's laid on there. It will not turn up or turn down or anything like that. So I'm lining one edge up with the line that is printed on the stocking. Now the reason I'm using this side is so when I get done, I'll have two exact alike stockings. Well, it looks like maybe I'm, I'm glad I did that because the green goes in that spot. That would have been bad news. So here we go with the green. And now let me show you again what I'm talking about. These two are going to look alike now. So when I get done with this, these will be stockings that are just the same. Now, if it doesn't matter to you, then you don't have to worry about that. And I could then just flip it over and use the side that was printed from the company. But those are going to be mirror image. So I'm going to leave mine like this. So Please. if you want your stockings to all face the same way, you're going to need to flip it over is what right. you're saying. Right. Every other one's going to end up getting flipped over and you're going to draw those lines. So I'm going to lay this on here like this, and I can tell down here that I've got enough of that one. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut those off. Now I'm going to tell you something about scissors here that you may have not known. When I'm doing this, I like to have, when I'm cutting pieces like that are two and a half inch and I want to get good and straight or I want to make it easy, I want to use what are called serrated scissors. I'm going to pull this up here, but I don't know how well you can see. But you can see they have almost like little teeth on them. And those serrated scissors are going to make it so that it grabs the fabric. So when I pick this up to cut it, let me just get a piece like this. This fabric just gets grabbed on with those scissors 
and it just cuts nice and straight across there. So again, they're not a great big pair. They're a smaller pair, but this is by Clover. And so these scissors, these are ones that we have sent out in um, kits before when we've done some of the shows um, and parties. So you may have seen them before, but I really like to use those scissors. Now the one that's going up here, I can either work this way or I can work that way, it doesn't matter. But the one that's going above up here is the red one. So I'm going to be taking this strip and what I need to do is make sure that I have enough that covers up here and down here and then I simply lay it over right on top of my first strip. Now. I do use a few pins here. Now I'm gonna tell you, you can see me putting this, but I'm not rubbing that on my table. I'm actually picking it up and putting that pin because I don't wanna scratch my table at all. So I'm picking that up and getting that on there. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my machine and I've got it set up for a quarter of an inch, but I wanna change my thread to a 60 weight thread so that I can have that better, flatter, smoother seam so when next week I start doing my quilting over it with my templates, I won't have any issues. So I've got that thread changed. I'm going to get my other bobbin here. This is a green thread, but it is a 60 weight. And so now I can put that in there for my piecing. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm using my quarter of an inch. I'm setting it back farther than this line right here. So I've got that line there and I'm setting my edge right on the edge and I'm gonna go ahead and put my needle down. I always put my needle down before I start. It just makes a smoother start. Your machine, I guess the home ec teacher is coming out in me, but your machine has already interacted two threads. And so when you start, it just makes it easier. And again, as I told you a couple weeks ago, I never sew over pins. So when I get up here to this next pin, I'm gonna stop my needles down. I pull that pin out. And for those of you who have been putting your pins in parallel to your stitch line, it's so much easier to pull them out and it's so much easier to keep things aligned if you put them in so that they're parallel, or excuse me, perpendicular. Denise would like to know what brand of thread are you using? Um, I use, for my 60 weight, I use the Quilter Select. It's by RNK. And you don't have to get a ton of colors of that because when you're piecing, you usually only use like gray, white, tan, black. Um, so you don't have to get a ton of colors, but I love the Quilter Select. That's Alex Anderson's brand. Now, that is already on there. I'm just simply going to take this and lay it back and it will meet up right with that next line. So I'm laying that back and I have what's called a seam roller. Forgot to put that on the list there. But rather than taking this and getting it ironed every single time, I just take my little seam roller right on my table and press it back. Now, would there be anything wrong with taking it to the iron? Not particularly, except I don't like to touch the iron to my batting that much. And I know this is fabric, but the heat's still going through. But most of you can see that was a good crease there. It wants to go right back to that. So I'm laying that back down. My next fabric is my gold fabric. And here's my little leftover piece of gold from the other one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to be laying it 
right beside the red there. And I'm going to take those pins and remember I'm lifting them up off of my table. I'm not pushing hard enough to scratch or scar my table at all. Now I always want to turn this back and make sure that I've got enough and I can see that this is short. We'd be fine there. Again, I'm off of the fabric. I put my foot down and my needle down. Now if you're just beginning, this is a great project to begin with, but I always recommend for beginners, for sure, to stop when you're taking the pen out because it's just something you, you're not probably familiar with yet and you just want to make sure that you don't go crooked on your seams, especially on something like this. So now I'm going to lay this one back and move that back over there. And again, I'm just going to take my little seam roller. So now that there's more fabric there, would it be a little bit safer than if they wanted to use it at the ironing board? You can, except I just don't like to get all of that heat every single time onto the batting. Even though it's just touching here, the heat's going through the batting. And I'm, I'm telling you, when you're doing this, you're going to love it because look at this right there. You can see that that really creased. It just laid nice and flat there. Now up here at the top, I can go ahead and get this out of my way. Where can they find that creaser? Um, probably almost every single local quilt store has one. I mean, they may look a little bit different one than that, but almost everybody has them. They just don't know what to do with them. I'm not saying the quilt store doesn't but we as consumers just don't know what to do with them and haven't had a need. So I have a little piece right here and this is going to go like so and I'm going to make sure that it covers and it does. Probably only need about one pen in this one. Come off the edge, needle down always have your thread to start underneath your foot you could be using a 2.0 stitch length here i'm just using the 2.4 or 2.5 whichever your machine comes up with um, because it is piecing so it's not but it's through the batting now i'm going to lay this back it's interesting, Megan will probably agree with me when she thinks about this, this one needs one more little piece, but the other one didn't have that. So they're going to be almost alike, not to worry. And where's my little seam roller? I must have covered, there it is. I depend on this little guy. And so now it's kind of like my choice what I want to put up there in that little corner. And since I know that the back is going to have red on it, I'm going to get a little piece, and it doesn't even need to be a two and a half. You can see it's just a scrap that I have because it's going to have enough there to do that. So I'm going to set this down, needle down. This is so much fun, and June Taylor has so many different projects like this. So hopefully we'll get to do some more of these. So I'm going to take this and roll that. You can see that's good and flat. And now everything gets turned around, and we're going to repeat going the other way. So this one is going to be that red one that I tried to start with a while ago. And I want to make sure when I turn it over, I don't have that salvage. So I'm going to turn it and see. I'm going to push it up just a little bit farther, making sure everything is nice and flat. Go by the edge of your fabric rather than the line. Your line could be off just a smidge. So you go by the edge of your fabric. And that's why you want to roll 
that so it's good and flat. Or like I said, if you choose, you can press it. Oh, that's a bad one. It's not a straight, straight pin? It was a straight, straight pin, but it didn't have a point on it, so it was more like a skewer than a pin. That's another thing. Make sure that when you're sewing, you have some good pens, good sharp pens. And the heads on them make all the difference in the world. The flat ones that we used to use that had just nothing but just a little tiny metal head, I call those rummage sale pens because... <laughs> Back when I was a kid, those were the pens that my mom used to put the prices on the rummage when we had rummage sales. If you haven't found or you don't know, try to locate for your particular machine a quarter inch foot because it makes all the difference in the world. Is you can just follow I don't watch the needle, which is what uh, is a habit of beginners for sure. You're wanting to watch right out here on the edge so that you can keep that good and straight. Okay, we're gonna cut that. And before I even roll press this, I'm just gonna cut off this extra up here. I'm gonna lay this back. Another good reason to have a nice big sew steady table or an insert for your machine so that you can work and work right at that table. I'm laughing because Donna just right, she just throws hers in the garbage. <laughs> throws what? Her bad pins. Oh yeah, yeah. I try to make sure that I've got them in one particular place so if the cats upset the thing, they don't get to them. But um, yeah. So next we have gold coming up. So I don't think that piece is going to be long enough. So let's go over here and get a new strip. Make sure it's going to lay back and be long enough. Again, don't worry about the line. Line it up with your fabric edge. And again, this would be a good project if you have a um, jelly roll that possibly has Christmas prints, or maybe you don't even want to use Christmas prints. Maybe at your house, Christmas is a different color, and you want to use some different fun fabrics with that. So I'm going to again set this down, set my foot in place. I've set my machine so it always stops with the needle down. going to cut this at a little bit of an angle because I know it needs to go I guess I had plenty there and then what's my last color Megan is it green you got oh it's the, the print red. Nope, okay the red oh all right so where's my roller And trust me, if I was just doing this to do it, I wouldn't do it. It really makes a difference when you do that roller. And I know that sounded kind of crazy, just doing it to do it. But anyway, so you said red. Oh, no, that's not long enough. So we're into our second strip here. I'm going to put that down there, line it up. Now next week when I show you the construction, I'm going to do my stocking a lot different than what they did. And trust me guys, it's a lot easier too. So when we do the construction, you're going to see how easy it is to make stockings. Some of you out there that have kids or grandkids that are wanting to help, this would be a great project to help let them get help started with helping you um, on it because it's something that they're going to be able to do with just a little bit of help from you. So I'm going to lay that back and sure enough we're out there on the edge. 
And what I want to do, just because it's really close down there, is just where the heel of that stocking is, I'm off the edge here. I'm just going to set this down because there would be a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to stitch that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that thread and you can see, believe it or not, that's a stocking because then when I turn it over, I've got my lines I can follow to cut that out. And so the next step is just cutting this out. So that's why I said, even if you don't want to make the mirror image, I would still draw the outline on the back so that when you turn it over, you wouldn't have all these lines in here, but you would have this outline so that you could cut that out. So that's the way you're going to get yours pieced. Let me go ahead and cut this out so you can see, and I will tell you these serrated scissors are great for this too because of the fact that they grab onto that batting and they don't let it like slip away from you. Do you have any questions while we're doing this? No questions, but let's, let's do a little bit of fun. If you have started a Christmas project, why don't you give us some loves? So we can see how many of you are out there started some Christmas in July already. And if you're not doing Christmas, why don't you give us some likes if you're just making something that's not related to Christmas, but another You're fun working project. on a project. Most quilters have at least two or three going. I can remember one time when I had a store, a, a mother and daughter came in, and the daughter was about 40 years old. So it wasn't like she was a young thing. And she picked out some stuff, and she was getting ready to get buy it. And her mother said to her, you can't get that. And I thought, well, this ought to be interesting. I want to hear the answer to this. And the mother said, you haven't finished the last project you started. Now, I know some of you are laughing out loud out there, so you can go ahead and put LOL on there, because you know you have way more projects started than one or two. You've got several because we just kind of get bored of one and go to another one. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't let anybody tell you there is. We've got quite a few, about 20 of each doing some Christmas, doing something else. And what did you tell them to do the laugh for? If they've got more Oh, they've got than more one? than one project well, you got started. a couple laughs. Well, I would think so. I got a whole drawer of projects that are started. I've got one that's probably 25 years old. So there's my stocking ready to go for next week. And we will pick that up and then I'll be showing you next week how we're going to be doing our stitching on that. But today we're going to do cross hatching on the back piece. So I'm going to throw this to the side and have Megan hand me my back piece. And this is my back. Now, in your handout, you have two uh, pages. One is the first page, uh, number two, is just showing you what it would be like. And I call this 90 degree diamond because where you're going to stitch is on the purple lines. The reason these other lines are in here is because when I use my crosshair grid, my crosshair grid is how I'm going to line this up. So I drew my four lines for reference, and I would be doing that, and I will, just a minute on my stocking, and then I just drew these lines, and that's the ones I would be stitching, except I would be echoing an inch away every single time. But what I want you to do, if you're up to it, and if you want to try it, is something you may not have done before, and I will tell you, you can quilt fabric for making your handbags and purses and all that different, those different projects. You can quilt those faster than you can use a walking foot on them. You can use templates and get it done faster. And I called this the 45. And the reason for that is these two lines are a 45 degree. So if I lay this on here in that center, and I laid that there, there's the purple line, and there's the purple line, and that's a 45 degree angle. So what we wanna do is we're gonna set this on here, something similar to this, because I really want this centered. I like to have a good centering on um, my, um, my diamonds. 
So if I was doing one of my small little bags or purses, and some of you have done that with me, I always get this centered. And so when I'm setting it up, this is one that is finished here. I think you can see it. But here would have been my center spot. And so from side to side, that ends up in the middle. So why I want to do that, I have to think about it at the very beginning. So if this is what I was doing, then I would be stitching on those two lines. So now let's go ahead and get that set up. So I'm using an eight and a half inch. That's straight across the top. So I'm just making it so, I'm sorry, that's straight across the top. So I'm just making this so that this is parallel with that. Maybe it's easier for you to see if I turn it yes. this way. So this is parallel with this edge right here. And I've got just about the same sticking off of either side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to take that mark, that mark, that mark, and that mark. And that's gonna be my um, reference point for getting the rest of it set up. Now those are not the lines that I'm gonna be using but I have to have those to know where to go next. So that's just my reference. And you can see that's centered from side to side. So now what I'm gonna do is when you put your ruler on there, you can see up here I've got my eight inch crosshair ruler. I've got where my up and down is. And then I have two lines, left and right. So I'm gonna set that on there and I'm not going to the first line, I'm going to the second line. So when I've got that second line lined up and down here the second line is lined up, I got this lined up here and here, these are the two lines that I'm actually going to be stitching on. And that's the diagram that you have, looks just like this, showing you that same thing. So now to keep it so I don't get confused, I connect these two lines and I've got a pretty good size brush here. You can use a toothbrush, but I can pretty easily get rid of that or I could, because it's iron off, I could just take my iron to it. But just I'm don't just, erase the other two, yeah, right? don't erase the other ones. So you got that, so that's what you're gonna do. So now, in order to get ready for this, I need to set up my machine. And for those of you that may be new, you're gonna to wanna to watch how this works. So what I'm gonna do on this particular machine, it comes with a ruler work foot. If you've not seen one before, that's what they look like. It has a tall wall and a half inch outer uh, measurement on that circle. And the machine dial sewing on is the Janome M7. M7. And so in the case of this particular machine, everything is pretty much built in. But if your machine, if you're going to be using a machine that doesn't have a foot for it, obviously So Steady has a foot, Westerly has a foot, so they're together. The, but they have a foot for you to use. Oh, I gotta change my thread while I'm here. So what I'm using right now is a 40 weight thread, and it happens to be a 100% polyester. So I am certainly not one that says everything has to be cotton or whatever. This one is 100% polyester thread. I am using a 90 top stitch needle. And if by chance this is your first time joining us, I would encourage you to go back on the files, actually the videos on So Steady's website, excuse me, So Steady's Facebook page, and go back to about March 17th or 18th. There is a getting started video that will tell you all about setting up your foot, the threads we use, the needles we use, and all of that kind of thing. A lot of good information is there. Now, we do have a question while you're still setting up. What kind of marker was it that you used? So I used the Clover Choco Pen, 
and it has a tip on it that is like a dolphin nose. And so that dolphin nose tip will fit inside the crevices of my crosshair square so that I can mark. And this one, I have emptied it out and I put pounce iron off chalk in it. So that pounce iron off chalk allows me to do all my work and then simply iron it off because that chalk will come right off. Now, you can use your six and a half, well, it's actually called the 12 inch arc. You can use that ruler, that will work fine. But what I have done is some of you may already have this ruler that I designed, and this is called the um, centering ruler. It's a 12 and a half inch centering ruler, and that's because on the center here, we have it so we can measure out to each side. And so this is gonna be longer for us, and we don't have to stop as often. So what I'm gonna do is I want, because remember I called this my center, I want my stitching right on that line, not a quarter of an inch away. So I'm gonna take my chalk marker and I'm gonna go ahead so that I know where this is up here and extend that line. And then I'm gonna set right off the edge, I'm gonna put my needle in, uh-oh, I would have known this real quick, Who's out there going, wonder why she didn't put that glider on? For those of you that are new, this is a glider. This is called a grid glider. And I'm lining it up because it has a nice big opening that I could actually have done my piecing right on top of this. And this is smooth and it allows me to glide my fabric right over it. So I need to go in and I need to set my machine for ruler work. And I'm gonna come off the edge, like I said, right there. Now, when I stitched, or when I pressed this down, this right here is still the gluey part. So I didn't get my um, iron out on that edge because I don't want any of that glue, but this is stuck down it's not stuck down close to the edge here, but that's okay. But right there, it's stuck down. It's stuck down all in here. But I'm gonna set my needle down and I'm gonna show you if by chance, now I know this is never gonna happen to you, but maybe it will. If by chance you got your iron out on this glue and you got some on the bottom of your iron, take a piece of paper towel and lay a new bounce dryer sheet right on top of it. And then you can run your iron, not on your table, but on your ironing board. You can run your iron on that and you can get that stuff off. So if you ever have any of the glue from interfacing, fusible fleece or anything like that, if you have that on your iron, a bounce dryer sheet on top of a paper towel, and you're gonna, I usually have two or three paper towels, and you're gonna be able to use this over and over. You'll see it gets pretty disgusting after it's taken it off. And another thing, Megan even this week said, Mom, I didn't even realize this, but the iron didn't look bad, but it didn't glide across the fabric very well. And so I said, well, run it across the bounce dryer sheet, and it will put the glide right back on your iron. So that's a great hint, a great tip. As they, it cannot be a used dryer sheet. It right, it new, needs right? to be a new one because whatever is in it that softens is what takes it off, takes off the glue. So... That's a hint from like 20 some years ago when I was sitting by a lady from the Pellon Company. So that was one thing that she told me, if that ever happens to you, just use a bounce dryer sheet. And the reason I say bounce is like, I'm not getting paid by bounce, but some of the other dryer sheets, if they're that webbing, that's okay. But some of them are that kind of spongy stuff and that doesn't work. We have a question from Kristen from New Zealand. If you don't have ruler work on your machine, do you just use your free motion? If you don't have ruler work on your machine, it depends on your setup, but I will tell you that it's best to just select straight stitch and make sure you get your foot adjusted to the height and do it that way. And that's why I would recommend you go back and watch that getting started video. Great question, because um, 
I also own a Viking and the Viking machines, some of them don't have ruler work, but they have free motion, but that means they're hopping all over the place. And so you definitely just want to use the straight stitch, not the free motion setting. If you have issues with that, I believe my um, email is on there. If it's not, it's on my website. Please email me because I honestly can tell you in about a 10 minute um, chat on like a FaceTime, we can get your machine set up really easily. And I would love to help you do that because I don't want you to be in trouble that way. One last question that I'm sure others will ask. Does the iron, when you're using that bounce dryer sheet, have to be on and hot? Oh yes, great point. Thanks for asking the question. Yes, it needs to be on and it needs to be hot. And that's why you're definitely gonna be using your ironing board. Don't use your wool mat or anything like that. Use your ironing board. Okay, so I want to space my quarter of an inch right here so that my needle is down. It means my foot is a quarter of an inch from the line. And so now I'm gonna get started. I did not pull my thread up because I was off of my fabric. I won't have to tie any knots or anything like this because I'm going to stay out in what I call the margin for all of my turns and whatever. And so I'm going to line this up again. I can line it up there because that's in the vision where you're looking. Or I could come down here farther, which is out of your vision. It's still going to be the same because as you all remember, two points make a line and a straight line. So I'm dead center now. I really don't need to mark the rest of this because I can simply do what I was doing before and line up. You'll notice I'm not pushing hard on anything there. And when I get down to here, there's no line. However, she Ooh. caught me just in time. I about stitched a strip to the back of that. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to show you because I'm going to turn it around, even though I don't have a line in front, I can go to the back and measure. So I don't necessarily need to draw that line all that way because this is still straight when I measure from the back. So when I come down here, I'm going to just stop there and I have a thread cutter and I'm out in the margin, so I'm just going to cut that thread. Now I'm going to do the other direction, the one long line in the other direction. And so I'm going to show you, I need to mark that line because that's the only way I'm going to have it so that it is in the right space down there for me to get started because I don't want my ruler on the line. I want my needle in the line. So I'm coming down here and I'm measuring. I'm going to stick the um, spacing gauge down a little farther. Here's where I'm going to pull it for the length, but I'm going to go back to the back. And again, I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Now, I need to make, I've decided I want an inch apart. So I have two things I can do. The first one I'm gonna show you is perfectly fine. The second one is a lot easier. So if I was using my little straight edge here, you'll notice I've got my lines. I have those same quarter inch lines on this long ruler. So if I have a quarter of an inch from my needle to the edge of my foot, and then an additional one quarter, one half, three fourths. I put that on there. When I start right back here, I am now an inch away. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set my foot down. I'm gonna set my needle down. And come back a little bit off of that stocking. And then I can start. And all I'm doing is keeping my line, my third line right there, on top of what I've already stitched. So we have a machine question while you're doing that. 
Um, Jennifer has a Brother Dream machine. Do you know, does that have the ruler work setting in it? I don't believe it does, but it does great ruler work and it's a high shank ruler foot. And you're just going to select the straight stitch and always make sure that your needle is in the center of the foot. Because the last time I used the Dream Machine, I had to center my needle just a couple touches on that adjustment. Oops. All right, so I was able to get my one inch apart. You can see it right there. You can see it down here just a little bit better. But a way that's a whole lot easier, and I know many of you already have Echo Guides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out my largest echo guide this is it right here there's actually three of them this is the large one and i'm going to set it on my foot so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my thread i'll pull it out here on the white so you can see it and i'm going to put that thread this is called an expansion slot and so i'm going to put that thread in that expansion slot put my foot back underneath there and simply lower the foot and now it picks up my echo guide. I want it up just a little bit higher so that when I'm stitching, it still is smooth here. So I might need to put that up just a little bit more. We have a great question from Claudine that I'm sure some of our other newbies might um, like to know as well. What is ruler work? Ruler work is using what we um, call rulers, but templates is the same name. Long arm um, people, and when, how do I say that? Long arms are a, a machine, a big machine, and when they have used any kind of an acrylic shape, they call them rulers. But we call them templates in the domestic side, and so the word template and ruler is the same thing. So you can call this template work, you could call it ruler work, but what it is using is any kinds of shapes. Now, I'm only using one straight shape this time, and that's the straight edge. But next time, I'll be using six or seven different ones. Here's an example that I showed how to use a couple of weeks ago. So I would be making this shape inside here. So that's ruler work, and that's a great question. Now, I don't have to measure this three lines anymore. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my one inch, I'm going to lay my edge of my ruler. It could be the short one, too. You could do the short one just like this and have the same outcome. In fact, I'll do that first. And so what I'm doing is I'm starting out here in my margin because that's going to get cut off. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stay right beside my ruler. I stop before I get to the bottom. I realign. And I continue on. So it's a lot less math related if you're doing it this yeah, way. Yeah, and you don't have to keep looking for the line. It's just, it's just easier. Now you'll see right now, I am off the edge and out in the margin. So whenever you're doing something like this, it's easier to cut larger. So you have a margin. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in the margin here until this edge touches that line. And so now I know that I'm in the right place. I'm going to lay this ruler right up against there, and I'm going to go backwards. When I get close to being off the ruler, I look behind there, and I'm just lining up that template with what I've already stitched. Now, nobody's asked yet, but that's probably because most of you know my feed teeth are dropped, and I'm the one that is controlling the stitches. If I don't move this, hence I have this nice glider here, if I don't move it, it's not going anywhere. And you'll notice I have this placed, my hand placed here, just like I do over here, and this one is just holding this in place, and this is helping. So I'm just pulling that fabric along, I'm off the edge, I'm coming back down until it's right beside there. I hope some of you are having some aha moments right now because when I figured this out, it was like, whoa, this is awesome. Because I didn't know about or think about using my echo guide for something as simple as this, but it sure makes a huge difference. 
I'm coming out. I'm lining up. I'm always at the center. Don't line up down here. That won't make any sense. You gotta line up at the center. I'm on my line. So we have a few questions about echo guides. Uh, Judy would like to know, are echo guides specific to each machine? She's got a Janome 15,000 and didn't know if... If you're using your Janome 15,000, this is the Janome foot that I have and I use it on all my Janome machines. If you're using that foot, I know it fits. If you're using the Westerly foot, I know it fits. If you use a Bernina foot, I've used it on that successfully. Um, you just have to, you just have to try it. So is there, but is there only one size? One? Right, there's only one size. This doesn't come in thicknesses or anything like that. And I shouldn't say one size. There's only one option for ordering. You're going to get half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch. So if I had this one on here, I would be making half inch apart. And that's cool too. If you've got something small, you can do half inch apart. This one would make it three quarters. You may want to do it so you have some that you would come back and this would have a quarter of an inch away from here. So you would be using your foot alone and just have a quarter of an inch away from each of these lines. So you can do all kinds of things with echo quilting. So since you just said there's only one size of all of these echo guides, uh, Melody has them, but they're loose on her ruler work for, for, for her Juki. Is there any suggestions on making that a little tighter or? So the get question I would have is your Juki must have its own foot. It's not, a, it's not the high shank special westerly foot she says she has the westerly high high thing high, high shank special yes, i'm sorry and it's still loose i would okay so when you put it down in there then it doesn't pick it up is that what you're saying okay so what i want to tell you and that's i'm glad you ask it because when you can read the number that's the side that needs to be up if you go this way it won't fit in there correctly. Now I will tell you that there are times when I set this down and it doesn't pick it up because it's not seated in there and then I just pull it up on my foot because some of your feet, uh, if you think of this as the outer wall of a foot, some of your feet are kind of like this. They're thinner on the bottom than they are. I, I, it's not that much because obviously it would affect your ruler work, but they may be a little bit different so that when you pick them up, they will fit better. Now, this is gonna sound kind of crazy, but um, I don't know for, you're saying it slips off. It's not that it's too tight. So that won't matter what I was gonna think, okay. So it slips off. So I don't, you know, if it slips off, I would just try working with it a little bit. And again, don't hesitate to give me a call. Now you can see what I'm doing here is I'm getting right around to where I need to pick up and finish what I'm doing. So right there's my line, that's right beside it. I'm gonna go ahead and use the long one this time. Keep asking questions, those are great. And whoever just asked the question about Juki, again, shoot me an email with a couple of pictures and maybe we can get your problem resolved for you. I think Susan's on here from Mobile, Alabama, and Susan and I, we've talked several times, gotten through some issues. So Susan, give them a thumbs up and tell them it does work. I do answer my emails. We do have another question. Okay. Um, Stella, it looks like she has an older model sewing machine, like the Singers or the, home, the New Homes. Is there a foot that would fit onto those types so they can be doing these ruler works as well? Yes, and if you have a question as to whether yours will work or not, um, there should be a chart. And again, if you don't find the chart on the Sew Steady site, um, I will try to get a chart up on my site, but you can also just send me your make and model, or you could call Sew Steady and they'll help you with that. Great question though. We want everybody to get ruler working. You will find, believe it or not, people, I am not a free motioner. 
I've watched a couple of our other educators that are beautiful free motioners, and I just, I, that's just not me. I'm sorry. I wish I could do it. So if you've never been successful at free motion, you're going to have success with this once you're set up correctly. I know it. And we just have to get you ready to go and set up. And I will tell you that um, watching these and going back and watching some of the previous ones, you're going to find there's a ton of information. I imagine probably two-thirds of the people out there right now would agree with me that they know a lot more now than they did before the March COVID shutdown because we've had so much information out there via all of these lives that we do. So you mentioned earlier a lot of people are having light bulbs. There are a lot are, that are telling us they'd never thought to use their echo guides this way. So. I know, and it makes it so much easier. So I have done all of them. I'm going to flip it over so you can see it. I have done all of them that direction. I've got the one I originally did this direction, and you can see in my margin out here where I have come across and down and whatever, and it just makes it so much easier to do it that way. Just leave yourself a little bit of extra space or cut your project a little larger. Like if you were doing a pocket on a bag, cut your pocket a little larger and then just do your quilting and then cut it to the exact size. And I will tell you, this is so relaxing. When you get going with your template quilting, and for those of you that it sounds like we've got some new ones out there, what I do is I set my machine to a medium speed, and then I turn my foot pedal around to the back, and I floor it. And I will tell you when I hear people say what stitch length, you know, all of that stuff, because obviously you are the stitch length, the only way I could ever get used to doing this was to have one good speed. Well, I don't have a stitch regulator, which is something that people always ask me when they're watching me in person is, do you have a stitch regulator? I don't. And the reason I don't need one is because I'm flooring it, but I have my machine set on medium. So when I floor it, it's the same consistent speed. Now I know I've been talking a lot, so I'm going to just be quiet so you can hear the speed as I do this. You'll notice it's not increasing or decreasing or revving up or slowing down. It's just one even pace. And that way I can get used to what I'm doing by pulling and pushing my hands. Now I will tell you, I am not gonna be the template quilting police. Nobody should come around and look real close at your, you know, your stitching and go, oh, that one's a little bit longer or whatever, because that was me when I first started free motion. I'd try it and then I'd work myself into a corner and couldn't get out and then I looked at what I'd done and it looked awful and I said, that's it, I'm taking it out. And you know, you just, there's, there's just too much to do in life to sit with a seam ripper in your hand all the time. So I can tell you that if you set your machine to a medium speed, turn that foot pedal around on the floor to the back, you will find that once you just floor it, because that's all the faster it's gonna go, is what I've got right there, you're gonna have a much better more even stitch. And this, I will say, is the easiest way to get started, is doing cross hatching over and over and over because it's going to give you a lot of practice with just straight lines. Now, I've got this up to where I can't go any farther. You can see I've got my diamonds up here, but I don't have them down here. So I'm going to flip this over, come to this side of the line, lay this up against here. You'll notice I have stable tape on this ruler also. This ruler is the same thickness as a template. And that was because I wanted to be able to use it in this manner. So I didn't have to start and stop all the time. And this is a ruler that I designed, so you would find it at sobizmarion.com that's the only place it's available I want you to go to your local quilt store for products because we need our local quilt stores 
I had a brick and mortar store for 35 years. And I will tell you, it is really tough out there when people are always buying somewhere that, you know, is not supporting local. And I can say for sure that many of your local stores are probably not open, but they're doing curbside and they're doing online and all of those. So you do have an option to get a hold of that. And most of them would be really glad if you would ask, you know, what you want, because I know, for example, the pattern we're using here, the June Taylor quilt as you go stocking, I know they can get that for you very easily. So take advantage of the local quilt store that you have and support them if you can. Any other questions? No, but I had to laugh earlier. Um, Tina was replying to Donna about all the tech lives and everything that's been going on. And Tina said she'd be a millionaire if she didn't quilt. Oh yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's eye candy when you see those templates. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do this very last line. And I want Megan to get one of my storage containers for my quilts so that you guys can see how I store my, my or for my quilts, my templates, sorry. So you can see how easy it is to store them. I use the crates that kids use for back to school. And this is gonna be kind of funny because it's on the floor, so she's gonna be taking the camera and swinging it around to the floor. But what we have is a crate, and those crates are able to be used with hanging file folders. And so I have my templates in here with their names on them, and right in there is that particular template with its little cover. So some of them are the whole sets, like, for example, we're going to be using Between the Lines. This is the one that we're going to be using next week. It looks like that. You can get it by itself or you can get a whole set. And so I have that in there. And those little names make it so easy to find. I hate to admit, but I have how many? Three. Three? You didn't tell them that, did you? I didn't tell them that at okay. all. Okay. Okay. I have three of those. Since I'm down here, can I swing around and show them what you're talking about with your foot and the, yep, the back pedal? Sure. So now that we're down on the floor... My foot pedal right there is backwards. As you can see, the high side is closest to me. So when I press on it, it goes clear to the floor and that's what gets my consistent speed. So now that we're back up here, you can see I have quilted the diamond shape there. Looks just like what if you would have bought it, right? Looks like a Vera Bradley to me. It, mm -mm, Vera Bradley? Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. And we always just say we want it very badly, so we say with the, v, <laughs> the VB. But anyway, all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting up again. And here, I'm telling you, once you've tried some of these serrated scissors, you're absolutely going to love them because they just grab onto that batting and it doesn't slip. And I'm just going to be cutting this out right up next to it. And obviously, you guys have plenty of time. Next week, I'm going to be showing, you won't have to sew along with me, but I'm going to be showing how I quilted it. And the front, right? Because you've already quilted the I've back. I've already quilted the back, correct. And then we're going to do the construction so that we will be doing the um, easy technique for construction. I've got one more thing I want to show you today. So, Megan, is my iron on right there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish, and you can see because I'm out in that margin, all of that's going to get cut off. I didn't have to stop, secure my threads. I was able to use my cutter. If you have one, use it. It saves you a lot of time. And I want to get this absolutely right at the edge of my fabric. And now what I would do would be to go over and I would press this again. So since that's hot, you know, stay right there and let's get the little ironing board over there. Here, we can do this. Never mind. Second thoughts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my wool mat up on my table here. I have a little tiny iron and be the reason I like that is because I can keep it with me all the time and it's always hot. And so this iron off chalk you can see it's ironing off right there. And I don't know if you mentioned it, but before you 
put this down. You did spray starch it, right? No, I didn't because the chalk does not need. If you're oh. going to use a Frixon pen, yes, you would spray starch, but if you have the chalk, it just simply irons off. So there's my stocking back ready to go. Like I said, you could use the other diamond. You don't have to use this one in particular. Most people like to try different shapes. And I will tell you, make sure you get it going like this, not like that, because you'll end up with a wide diamond from side to side. It would look like that. Now, if that's what you're wanting, that's perfectly fine. But if you want it to be tall like this, which is mostly the way we use it, you're going to do it like that. So now I've also, this is a little steam iron. This is one you can put water in. And so I'm, the steam activates the uh, glue that's in that Pellon fusible. And so this is gonna glue all of those areas down. So we'll be ready to use it next week. Now what I wanna show you is we are going to need the stocking over there. And Megan, I have a little two inch strip that is this red color. It's probably in that stack, two inches. It's only about six inches long. There you go. This is a two inch strip that's about five to six inches long. And we are going to need to make this little guy right here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm using what's called, I believe this is, yeah, this is by Clover. Dritz also makes some of them. And this is the one that's going to make a one inch fold. So if you've never used one of these, I've cut it to a point just because it makes it easier. And so I'm going to push that in there to get it started. And you can see that it's just kind of hugging up against that blue piece. They make these in a lot of different sizes. This is the one I use all the time. And because that was at a point, that little tongue like there is sticking out already. If it wasn't coming through there, the slot in the blue is so that you can take a pen and push it on through. You can see that I can push that out a little bit more. So what I do is I pull it out to get it started. And I'm gonna lay that to the side. The whole idea is that this meets in the middle. They call these bias tape makers, but you can use cut straight edge fabric, straight on the grain fabric, which is what this is. And now that I've got that there, all I have to do is take my iron and use it right like that to press that. And of course, if you've got a bigger ironing board, it's gonna be a little bit quicker and easier. And I'm just coming right down to the end and then all I'm gonna do is fold this over so it meets. And after I do that, I'm gonna press, a, or I'm gonna stitch with my red thread a quarter of an inch, or not a quarter of an inch, right up next to the edge. So I'm gonna set that there. I'm gonna quickly put my foot back. So we did have a question from Dee. Um, can you use hard tap water in this little iron here? I use distilled just because it's easily available. I don't remember that one saying it had to be distilled. In fact, we have a filter, like if you have a Brita filter or something like that, we have a filter on our water here that we drink, and I just use that water, and I've not had any problems with it all. And that one is the one that's called the steam fast and it's the one it's a little travel iron has a really long cord which i really like and as i said it stays hot all the time like right now if i go over to my regular iron it's off and i have to kind of wait a little bit it's not a long time but you know you have to wait a little bit and this one stays on all the time that i'm working so i've got this set up here and you'll notice that on this particular foot, when this is in the center, my needle is not in the right place for my quarter inch foot, but beautiful thinking. Janome made it so that if I were to go ahead and stitch here, I don't break my needle. I can't sew very far because it's gonna be in that hole, but I'm gonna go back to my regular stitching and I am going to 
select the straight stitch, my feed teeth will automatically come up and I am just going to set my needle to the left needle position and I'm right in the middle of that foot I'm going to start. Now what I want to tell you is if you were to do that and you had issues with it, like it ate your fabric, then what you need is a starting block. And so I'm going to show you this time. I keep one right handy. This is just a scrap of fabric that I folded over. And what I do is I start sewing with it. And when I get up to the edge, so that it's like one stitch off, then I start my actual piece. Because my threads are secured in the starting block, it will not allow my fabric to be eaten. So if you have one of those machines that kind of wants to take grab of your fabric and pull it down under, what you would do is each time you start something like that, you would just take that starting block, I just reuse it again and again, set it down, start, and then put your fabric up underneath that. A lot of people use that on piecing too. So what I've got here is I've got my little piece of fabric that's gonna make my loop and it's all finished and stitched together. I didn't have to do any hand stitching and I'm gonna cut off that little point that was there. And so next week that will be ready for me to use. So I believe this was, yeah, this was six inches of fabric and so now it's about five and three quarters since I cut a little bit off of there. So I hope that gives you some idea of what we can do here in uh, July to get ready for Christmas. I'm excited to share with you what we're going to do next week. You're going to have so much fun um, seeing some of these designs take place. I've used metallic threads. I've used regular threads. Um, I guess you could use a variegated thread on a couple of these. And um, we'll talk about all of that next week. Um, have a lot of fun sharing with everyone. I just absolutely love doing these classes. I hope you're getting a lot out of it. And share with your friends. Um, have a watch party. Tell your friends you're going to do a watch party at whatever time. And you can come back and watch this all together. So for now, we'll say we'll see you next week. Have fun. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.